Today, in part one of this two-part series, we'll work alongside Dave as he attempts to get this lovely little BSA Bantam up and running again after being sat in a shed for over 18 years. The bike looks clean on the surface, but underneath there's a fair bit that needs doing to get it going, so it's safe and reliable to ride. Let's get this bike started. Now, what we need to do with this, it's been standing again for a long time. It's gonna be a really quick one. Tank off, flush the tank out. Fuel line is pretty hard, it's all crimped. So we keep that if we can. We take the fuel tap out of it, clean that out, get that flowing, that fuel. So flush the tank out. Carburetor off, overhaul the carb. The slide's stuck in the carburetor at the moment. I have checked for a spark, it has got a spark. So what we're gonna do really is just sort that spline out, tighten that up, drop out any residue from the crankcase because it's a two stroke, there might be an oil residue because the mixture's gone down the bottom of the crankcase, you can drain it off. The gearbox oil level, it's got very small amount of oil in there, we'll drop it out, put new oil in there. It's got the wrong mud guards. But if you've got a pair of mudguards for it, it's a nice stainless steel one, so you can make it a nice little bike. Unusual, but for this period of time, they had the Kickstarter and the gear lever on the same shaft, so to speak. So the central shaft is your gear lever. That runs through a hollow shaft, and that hollow shaft has spine on the outside. That incorporates the kickstart. So the kickstart is over the top, it's sleeved over the top. With a Bantam, you can pull the clutch in and you can still start it up. You don't have to find neutral. It's set up that way that you can pull that clutch in. That is independent. So I can kick that over, it's not driving it forward, which is quite handy for learners if they stall it. First thing, the tape, disconnect the tap. Try, I think we'll be all right to lift this whole lot off. Because this is all swaged on here, this is a very quick bike, we're gonna try and keep that as it is. So we're not gonna to worry too much about that for the moment. We drop the tank off, just need to drift out the rear bolt. Now if we're careful, we can just get this tank away with this fuel line on. Okay, and taking the fuel tap off the fuel line, the tap plunger is a bit seized up. So we'll sort that out, get some hot water in a moment and soak that, should get that moving. Those are clean. A little bit of rust around there. The idea of this, when you filled up with free, uh, fresh petrol and you've got your tank filled up, you would have a shot of two-stroke oil and needs to surface at the petrol station. So you'd fill this cavity here with one measure of oil to a tank of petrol. That was your mixture ratio. And on here, it's got all the measure. It says measures of oil per gallon. So it's three for running in and see the manual for, obviously once it's been run in. But they're running on like 16 to one. But we'll run this on modern oil, but we'll do it on a semi-synthetic, we'll probably run it on 32 to one mix which should be fine, it won't smoke so much, and that's the thing with two strokes, now they don't, because you've got better oil, better lubrication. So that's that, so I think what we'll do is we'll put the sonic cleaner on, and while it's warming up, we'll take the carb off. We're gonna take the plug out, uh, I've known we've got a spark, but we're just gonna show you, we've got a spark. It has stood for a long, long time. Yeah, I've got a spark. You need to take the carb off now, that comes off with the air, um, filter, which is a choke slide, the choke shutter. Now, I think the slide is stuck in this carburetor. So we have to be a bit careful. I'm gonna slacken this off before we take the carb off. Just hold the clip out. So a little bit of spray in here. It might just help. Let that soak for the moment. Right, so we've got two bolts on the manifold. The fuel, it really does smell. It's gone off, it's probably years old. Put a match to it, wouldn't even burn. Okay, so now we can see our stuck slide. We now try and spray it from the inside. Very careful, you can see if the slide moves with a screwdriver. Not put any leverage on it, just to really just literally rest it underneath there. Okay, 
do a little bit this side. Just see if we have any movement. Yep. That's gone. We spray it a bit more. So we got now we've got a bit of movement. There we go. Well, I'd like to try and push it up and down. So what I'm going to do now, so there's no damage here, I'm going to push on the top of the slide on the inside. I'm going to just push that back down. If it go. That's it. I'm going to try and move that up and down a little bit. Just get that moving. It's started to move. Don't get too impatient with it, just work it. That's it. It likes to be slackened off on that side. As long as you're not pushing it on the side of the slide and scoring it. There we go. It's what it is, it's oil residue here. That's mixture. That's all the petrols evaporate and left the oil. It's all gummy. So that's out. Now we need to put this through the chemical wash, the kerosene now. Wash the carb out. Surface debris off. Save the sonic cleaner. Okay, we're going to strip this out. Just need to break the seal of the gasket. Because the tank has been obviously full of sale fuel, it's a bit gummy, so we're just going to give it a wash out in the kerosene washer. So I think this it should help. We'll let it fill up. We'll slosh it out a few times. The filler tube for the oil. Um, it's a little bit rusty, so we just do a, a quick clean up on this, get the surface rust off, and then it can go in the kerosene and be clean with the tank. Where the tap was, we put a bolt in there so it would fill up with fuel, so we just take the bolt out, give it a bit of a shake. Pretty good inside now. Okay, just blowing out where the fuel tap's going to go. There shouldn't really be anything in here now. We just need to clean up the inside of this oil filler because it's got a little bit of rust on the inside. We washed it out on the kerosene. We've put it through the sonic cleaner here. Give it a good blowout, and that should be good to go. Almost ready to take the bits out the cleaner and reassemble the carburetor. We're just going to wash out that. Um, it's just an air filter, it's only got a gauze in there, and this is a choke shutter as well. Okay, it's all the bits, so we need to just put those through the kerosene just to wash them out. We're just going to wash out this loose residue of oil. That's in here. The sonic cleaner's freed it up because it's got hot. That should all come out now. Oh 
So the slide itself is okay, but we've got this residue of oil, this tarnish here. So we just need to get rid of that. So what we've got here, we've got the rag soaked with a bit of brake cleaner, just to try and get the residue of oil off. This is congealed two-stroke mixture oil. We don't want to rub the slide down and wear it away. Never use wet and dry. Also just clean the needle. It's got a brown stain on it. Okay, we've got a gasket missing from here and I've managed to find one. We clean the slide up, so we're just going to spray the slide. A little bit of lube, so we put the needle down. Make sure it comes down into Venturi, it goes down through to emulsion jet. And now we just need to locate the slot. I think we're just going to polish this up a little bit, it's a bit stiff. This I find is the best one. This is a, a teacup metal polish. You don't get any black residue of this afterwards. It's good for using on your cases. We're just going to go around this up and down. There's a few little hairline score marks, so it just brings those out. That's where you'll find it's on the opening side. Probably got a little bit of a lip. You can see it just there. we we'll put a bit more spray back on there. And just see how that sits now. It's got to pick up the groove. Just bring round your the notch and your top cover. Just make sure it's down properly before you put collar on. And the spring clip, just make sure it goes on squarely. Just check that slide. Yeah, that's fine. Let's start this one on this side. Okay, when you pull up your manifold nuts on the studs or bolts as this is, don't over tighten them. If you put too much strain on there, you can distort the carburetor body and the slide can tighten up in the, the slide can tighten up in the body but because we've got a gasket and o-ring on there that now is okay just nip those up and go back to your other one and just pull it up okay that's on there that's tight what you've got on the bantam a lot of two strokes of videos and uh, this bsa engine this is the bottom of the crankcase there's a there's a little tiny bung here you can get rid of old mixture so if the engine was flooded, for instance, you could take this out and you could drop all the two-stroke mixture because how it works two-stroke, it takes the fuel in through the engine, it goes in through the transfer port, it goes in the crankcase. If you've got too much in the crankcase, you can drain it off. Or if the carb had the tap left on and it went through the carburetor, it filled the crankcase up, this is where you drain it from. I don't say there'd be anything here, but there might be some oil residue that comes out. So we take this bung out, this drain plug. See, there'd be oil on there. That is the last of the two-stroke. I'm going to turn it over by hand on the kickstart and see if we can get a few more tricks. I think that's clear now, but it did drip a little bit of oil out. But you can feel it blowing out there. That's fine now, we can put that back in. Well, we've done that one. Now what we're going to do, I know the gearbox oil level is low, so we're going to drop the plug, drop the oil out and put fresh oil in there. What I would say about this bike, we're just looking at it and draining the oil out and it's all fed in new oil. And that's something I've mentioned to you that I believe this was given to somebody through the widow of someone that passed away. Now it's probably his pride and joy when he was alive and he, like his mud guards, a lot of people say, oh, they look terrible. But it's his ability to put those on there and get that working. I've said earlier, we've got some nice mud guards on here. Look a nice little bike, but it's, one person's ability, one person's ability is different to another person's. He didn't have the facilities like I've got here. He probably just had a shed and just had a vice and a few tools. And he made what he could and he'd done a good job really. So yeah, you can't knock it sometimes. Sometimes we look at people's achievements and we laugh a little bit, but really it's everyone's ability. And you, you know, if someone's done that, Good on them, really. That's how I see things. Got an exhaust loose here now. It's got a collar that goes straight onto the barrel. There should be a sealing gasket, asbestos and copper gasket on the other side. It, it might just knock up tight, but we're not going to do anything at the moment. I'd rather soak that with a bit of um, a duck oil or something and get the engine warm anyway as well. And that would have that capillary action. It might make it free enough so we can just tap it around and 
lock it up a bit, but it's a bit loose. But we, we'll crack on with the rest of it. We've put some fresh oil in here now. So we're going to start filling. We've got the drain plug in. Now on here, the oil level's done with a dipstick in the top. I'm not quite sure how much oil that takes off, takes to hand. So we're just going to be carefully pumping a bit of oil in and we check it. Right, with um, gearboxes, all the old British stuff runs on a gear oil because most of the systems are a separate gearbox. They don't run a gearbox with the engine oil. Because this is the two stroke, so you pre-mix in the tank. That's lubricating the piston doing the crank. The gearbox is totally separate. If you see it here, we can see a film where we've got the groove and they've just wiped that away. We're just on it there. Yeah, just put a little bit of oil in the bore, just put the compression up a little bit. We've got a good spark, so we've put the plug back in now. We've just put the tap back into the tank. We've had a little bit of trouble trying to clean up that filter, but it's clean now. We're doing it in one go because this is line is all connected and it's waged up, so we don't want to disturb that. Just got some cables to get out of the way. On the banjo, it didn't have a fibre washer on the top, and I really want a big one, but I've got I've got something here, I've got two together here. And we're hoping, just for this now, we can make do. Because we're just gonna put a very small amount of fuel in this, I'm just gonna mix some up, pre-mix, do it at 25 to one. It's a good quality two-stroke oil. Okay, we're ready to go. We've got mixture mixed up in the tank. Tap's not leaking, considering the age of it. Depress the tickler so we get a bit of fuel out. Take a while because it's empty. We're just hoping it's going through the fuel strainer. If it's not, I think it's going to be all right. It might take a while to fill up. There it goes. That's okay. It's come out of there now. Oh, it's not shutting off at the moment. Sometimes you get that. You've got a bit of a fuel leak here. Just turned off a minute. So we're just going to take this off and just have a look at why that isn't it might well be the surface of this isn't very good. I've got to be careful lifting that off because it's, it's a bit hard to pipe. I think this is a bit cruddy. It's not sealing around there very well. This is a better one I've got. Didn't want to have to put it on here really, but it should just go straight on. Then your banjo over the top like that and it seals on there. No, it's still doing it. So we have to change, we'll put a little bit of fuel pipe on here now and change this whole thing. Because the pipe's gone hard, the fuel pipe. We've got to be careful we don't damage the tap. Because we've changed that banjo and it's slightly different size to the original, we need to warm up a bit of pipe. Now I've got some pipe, which we'll do. I need to warm it up with a blow lamp. Don't like doing this, but it is okay. Just don't put it right in the flame. It's just a bit um, cold in the workshop. We just need to get this a bit soft, a bit more pliable. Just keep it away from the main part of the flame. That's pretty soft now. That should go on. Put a little bit of spit on there. Okay, we're just gonna cut this down to size. Go a little bit longer than you need to. You can always take a bit more off, but you can't put it back. Now, there you are. Always have a bit of a, we can put a um, grip on there later on, clamp. We're just gonna see whether no, this is still doing it. So we've we've got another fuel pipe on here, another banjo, nylon one. We're going to put our filter back in the top and we're going to put this on and we're going to see how we go now. We've got a drip underneath the carburetor. Just going to check that. I think that's when we undone it just now. Just check those bowl screws are tight. We've got a new gasket on here. It just looks like it's a slight weep from here. If that continues, then we're We'll take that off later on. Now we're going to see if we've got this leaking here now. 
This strip is from the float chamber gasket. It's a new gasket, but we, we'll have a look at that later. We we'll probably here just have to put a bit of seal around that gasket. Somewhere it's just a little bit distorted. We'll just put a bit of rag underneath there. We're going to put it on choke. We really want to see if this thing goes. Take the choke off. Put it back on for a moment. we have here is a bit of fuel starvation so we we need to just check that float bowl is not dripping fuel now and to make sure that we've got the fuel going through that uh, tank filter because it was really crudded up yeah I've got a drip on here I'm gonna have to whip this off but we're just going to tickle that again I don't think the fuel is getting in there very quickly Let's just give that another kick over. Leave the choke on. A little bit of work on the carburetor, make sure we've got uh, this carburetor sealing up properly because it's leaking from the float bowl. So it's new gasket, but we had to take the whole thing, just probably the surface of the carburetor, just clean that up. It's probably got, if I show you, take these screws out here, same type of carburetor. Okay, so we, we put a new gasket on, okay, like this, but it might be that this surface area here is slightly distorted. So what we're doing also, maybe this as well is slightly out. We could swap it over to this one, but we give that a good clean up and make sure that's okay. It's just one of those things, it's, you know, it hasn't been run for donkey's years, but we're not far out. 